can string together here in Christ's name with the LDUs this day. We give thanks for those who are joining us in the service tonight, uh, with those who are also serving up, joining us online for our online services. We give thanks for you all being here at this time. Uh, just a few announcements uh, for the care of the congregation. Uh, just continued thoughts and prayers. Uh, uh, Lori Smith, who is a member of our congregation, her brother, Grant, um, has passed away. Uh, just passed away today. And so continued uh, prayers for uh, Grant Collier's uh, family, uh, Lori Smith, and the rest of the family. So uh, just continue to lift them up and keep them in your prayers on this day. Uh, there is a ski trip coming up for the youth that is coming up uh, next Sunday. So if anybody is interested in doing so, uh, there's a sign up uh, no later than February 10th to make sure we get on that for the people who are uh, interested in going on that uh, ski trip. Information on that can be found uh, online on our bulletin. Uh, so if you're looking at some of the prices for how much the lift tickets and all of that are. are. Uh, I think this this first one I think is just for the youth. Uh, the use of the second one they do open up to uh, all members of the congregation. So um, with that, I invite you to please uh, stand as you're able as we join together with our gathering song, uh, which is "Gather Us In." <laughs>
Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ is given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. So I call our demons to the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our prayer today, which is found printed in our gold. Let's pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of healing and fullness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue our service with our psalm. The uh, psalm for this Sunday uh, is printed at the bottom of your page. It's uh, 147. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord heals Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls on all our enemies. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, the past the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make music upon the harp to our God. Who covers the heavens with clouds, and bears the wind to the earth, making the grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides food for the cattle, and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the mark of a horse, and has no pleasure in the speed of a woman. But finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who wait God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. You may be seated as we continue with our readings. comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall not run, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid upon me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For I do this of my own will, I have a reward. If I, but if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, 
I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside of the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under, God, under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might, by all means, save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you're able as we hear our gospel for this day. Our gospel comes from Mark, the first chapter. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. And he came, and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been a very busy week for Jesus, and we move from one thought and within Mark to the next, as he's leaving the synagogue where he's just healed someone who had an unclean spirit, to now going to the home of Simon and Andrew and finding that his work is not done. That there's always something to do, and he's one who can do it. See, as soon as they walk in the door, they're confronted with this news that Simon's mother-in-law was with fever and needed to be healed. And he came and he just simply took her by the hand, and lifted her up, and she was healed. And then she began doing what we do when we have that resurgence of energy. We start preparing a meal and taking care of Jesus and all of this came in because of duty? No, I think out of that thanksgiving that we find when somebody is set free. See, it's the words in Greek are actually, the fever literally had let go of her. It had that hold on it. Whenever we've been sick, we know that feeling of actually not feeling good at all. The Energy is zapped from us. We don't can't do anything. We don't have the energy to move or less make anything for ourselves. So when this feeling of healing comes back and this fever is let go, well, there's thanksgiving that's being done as she continues to serve him. This next part of it continues to be where we find ourselves as Jesus is continuing to heal those. And it's at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it should be time for getting ready for bed. Sun is going down, and that's when everybody comes.
comes to the house. Those who are sick, those who are needy, those unclean spirits cast out, and those who are looking on to see this mighty act of God that is actually happening there. As somebody who worked as a manager within a restaurant, I can kind of see, see what's going on. That there's always something to do. And somebody is always looking for you. See, within this next step, everybody leaves. And then Jesus goes out early in the morning to pray. To pray to God, to actually pray to his Father in heaven, to hear and to be reminded of why he was sent to this earth. And then they come hunting. Simon and his companions come and they're hunting him down. Literally hunting him. Seeking him out. Because everybody wants him. Everybody wants Jesus to be back there. As a manager, I knew that there was always times where there was a machine that broke down or jammed with some money in it. Or something was going on and they couldn't find where the food was that was right in plain sight that they were out of. And so it was immediate. Anybody needed it right away. And it's very easy to get caught up in this feeling that you have to be there. You have to be there to actually solve all the problems that are going on, to heal the people, to fix the problems. And it's important for you to not move. Because if you do try taking some time off, you get the phone call. And it's calling to you to come back and do those things over and over. And sometimes it feels really good and validating to sit there and go, I know what to do. See, within our gospel, we hear Jesus breaking from something that we feel comfortable in doing to knowing why he was sent in the first place. Does Jesus know that there are people who need to be healed back in the, in the town of Capernaum? Yes, he does. There's always going to be somebody or something that needs to be fixed or healed. But he knows why he was sent. And this sometimes is the break that we have. See, Jesus is the one who leaves. Leaves to Pernum. Goes away from things that are comfortable, where people need him to actually go into the places where this word needs to continue to be shared. Going out into this world and into the country so that they may hear the proclamation of this good news of the one who is sent into this world to save those who are lost and needing care. Jesus knows exactly why he was sent, and it's not to be surrounded by the people who just need him, but to actually go to the cross for our sake, so that we may be saved and we may be able to have the life that we're really seeking out. See, one of the things that we face within this time of COVID-19 and other things that we know the doubts that surround us. We know the pandemic's effect upon us, the social unrest that we've seen, the political dysfunction that's around us, the economic uncertainty of jobs that might or might not be there in the future. These are very common things that are around us, and I think they've been around us for a while. But it's when we actually find out what our true needs are and are reminded of our need for God to continue to come into the brokenness of our lives, to those areas where we have been misled by the words of the devil, those who are trying to pull God's promises from us to making us think that maybe we're not worthy, maybe we're not loved, maybe we're too far broken. Who would ever want us? See, this is where Christ enters in to remind us of how much God's love is for us. To remind us that nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. To remind us that we are sinners in need of forgiveness. That we are those who are forgiven 
and children of God. We are called to understand the brokenness within relationships that we have. And sometimes our own selfishness that tries pulling us away from the things that we really need to do. The suspicions, the jealousy that is a part of our day-to-day -day lives are things that this is why Jesus left that mountaintop and continued to go to the cross for us. It's because we need that healing. We don't need somebody who is just going to stick around and solve our problems. See, that's kind of what the crowd was doing. There was many in the crowd that didn't need Jesus to heal them. Or they didn't think they needed Jesus to heal them. And this is why the gospel rings true with us. is because there's none who are outside of this need for the Savior. None of us are able to do that on our own. And as Jesus continues to share his gospel, the good news of why he came, we are set free. We who are bound are set free. And we are sent back into this world now with this good news to continue to share, to come near those who are broken, not because it's a duty, but because our neighbor needs us. That this good word needs to continue to be preached and heard, and we need to be reminded of, of it ourselves as we continue to go out and give thanks for what God has done and reaching down in the waters of baptism and pulling us up to new life so that we can be those who are set free to share this good news, giving thanks and praise to God our Father here and now and outside of these doors as we continue to share this word to this world, as it continues to break in into the darkness and bringing the light of Christ in this day. Amen. Continue our service with our song of this day. Our hymn of this day is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue our service with the prayers of the people. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. For the church, for ministries of healing and wholeness, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prison ministry, for all who proclaim freedom and release in the name of Christ, Lord, in your mercy. For creation, for those things that we continue to look upon, the clouds, on the mountains, the cattle, the rain and water, that we bring. May we continue to be stewards of all that you place in our hands. We give thanks for the farmers and ranchers who continue to tend and nourish and care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. For the nations, for all who lead in cities and towns, states and countries, for community organizers, school officials, and CEOs, for international health organizations, that in times of trial, fear, or hopelessness, they find freedom in service to those most in need. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> for all the weary by life's burdens, for those who are poor, for those lacking supportive relationships, for those crushed by death, for those struggling with chronic pain or other sickness, for those exhausted, from overwork or stress, for all who cry out to you. Especially we lift up to you, Rick Hamlet, Aubrey Romer, Jerry Smith, Cindy Lightweiser, Darlene Humber, Emilia Dujowski, Wayne Shonick, Jean Wong, Oswald Schultz, Kristen Claris, Rich Pardo, Fern Beely, Jackie Iver, Lucinda Rose, Ralph Henderson, Dallas Horish, Paul and Phyllis Rodersky, Lloyd Piscott, Miles Rabinsky, Lloyd Zavoda, Adeline Beattie, Terry Knish, Jean Herman, Ken Meyer, Katie Lawson, Diane Ryan Schultz, Tom McClune, Tom Trenda, Greg Blossett, Pastor Bob Boda, Amy Fortius, and Nancy Krieger. We lift up to you the family and friends of Eileen Chapman. We left a few the family and friends of Grant Collier, the brother of Laura Smith, who died this day. We left up to you the servicemen and women of this country, especially those serving from our congregation. Travis Ferguson, Cassidy Gilbertson, Ashley Noisky, Adam Blossing, Sam Westerhouse, and Brandon Dabow. We left up to you the EMTs and paramedics, doctors and nurses who to care for us. May you continue to keep them well during this time. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, for this congregation, for the outreach and social ministries that we do here, for those who continue to find ways to support one another and provide companionship in the midst of this time, for the young people in this place, who open us up to a new understandings. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you those who rest in your promise, we're gathered with the same hope that on that day when we're gathered around your heavenly throne, we'll gather together with Christ and all the saints. May we give thanks for this now as we look forward to that day ahead. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers 
for we know your promise to do so. You've asked us to lift up our needs, the needs of others to you. You promise to hear them on the safe count of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we see comfort in this and know that you hear them on account of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll now continue our service with our uh, great Thanksgiving. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a New Testament, my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and may we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hear and receive that this promise is indeed for you. This gift is open to all baptized Christians who believe in the promise of it, to take and eat for the forgiveness of their sins. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now go in peace and share this good news. And, and may the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you.